Welcome. I hope you enjoy the conversation you're about to see between me and another comedian about religion and comedy. These are conversations I'm calling Disorganized Religion. God bless. And for those atheists out there, may nothing await you after this life. Welcome, nerds. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Disorganized Religion. This week, I am joined by the fantastically talented and uh, amazingly attractive and not single, so tough luck, boys, Mandy Martino. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Mandy. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. How are you dealing with uh, the quarantine? This is a godsend. Um, well, I guess you take that word more seriously. Um, is it... No. Uh, it's been great. I have had. I've. I ask for this all the time. Like I always complain. I wish I had more time to do what I want, and I got it. And I have taken full advantage and have been enjoying every second of it. Oh, good. So, what kind of stuff are you doing to keep yourself occupied? Well, I finally wrote my first pilot, and I'm almost done with the Bible of it. I've been taking. Wow. My- five years on it. I just was so overwhelmed by not knowing how to do it. I thought I never had the time because you get like one free day a week with our normal schedule. Yeah. And uh, so that, that was a big one. That's very cool. So what is the, do you, do you want to get into the detail, not details, but general overview of your pilot? It's based on my life. Oh, okay. So it has a lot to do with stand up. Yeah. Oh, very fun. Very fun. So is it, are you trying to compete with Marvelous Mrs. Maisel or what's the the goal? Uh, uh, First is to just send it to festivals and then I want to make it into a web series. Got it. Are you trying for Quibi at all or no? No, I should. I've been checking out Quibi and since they're new, it'd be great. I should definitely look into them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, very fun. Well, congratulations. That's a huge achievement. Thank Look you. Look at you creating during this uh, forced downtime. Yeah, you have to. When else are we going to get this? Like, never. Yeah, probably not. Not collectively, at least. Yeah. Uh, well, very fun. Good for you. So it's about a thin-lipped stand-up woman. Yes. And her issues with her identity. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. The cover of it is just like really small lips. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's accurate, that's going to be your casting issue. Or are you going to cast yourself? Are you going to play yourself? Uh, but that's one reason I'd like to do a web series so I could play it. Otherwise, I won't be able to. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you come to the table, maybe having written it, maybe maybe you'll have some more bargaining power than, you know. At that- know. I think I would just be so happy that it was getting made. I'd be like, whoever you want. <laughs> it got made? What? Well, they have to have thin lips. That's it's on- the big... They used to be in. This is all new. I ever know, I've only watched old movies now because all the actresses just have small lips and it makes me feel like I, I have purpose. You were just born in the wrong era is all. I- I really was boring, average color hair and small lips. Just, just so, like twenty years ago. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, it's not that new. This thick-lipped craze. I dated a girl in high school who had snake venom lip balm. I remember that. It was when I was in high school too. Someone had that. I tried it. It didn't really work. <laughs> it didn't. <laughs> it's been a struggle before. It was a struggle. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Life can be tough for some of us. <laughs> Life can be very hard. So how long have you been doing stand-up, Mandy? Um, I started my last year of college, so it's been like six years, almost seven. Oh, wow. And was it? did you do uh, university in Florida, or where were yeah. you? I went to UCF, so Central Florida. Got it. That's a very uh, rigorous school, right? Not a party school at all? Or is it a party school? <laughs> Um, any school in Florida is a, is a party school. <laughs> <laughs> is that the 
stereotype. I wasn't sure. Uh, <laughs> oh, very fun. So la- had you always wanted to do stand up or what what pushed you into stand up? Uh, I've, I've always been obsessed with Saturday Night Live. So oh, okay. I've always been planning to move here like right after college. Uh, and I looked at like, where did Kristen Wiig go to school? And I'm like, the Groundlings. That's where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. So did you start stand up and uh, improv at the same time? I started improv both in Florida because I went to school for business. Because okay. it was just broad, get it over with, get something that, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> that could be useful. I mean, you might start useful. a comedy empire, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then there was Saks, which is an improv school in Orlando. It's where Wayne Brady went, and he started Ooh. there. Ooh. And <laughs> his pictures are everywhere. <laughs> he has very <laughs> thick lips. Yes, he does. Out. He does. Uh, both my lips together are his top lip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and then I started taking classes at the Orlando Improv for stand-up. So I just, while in school, I took those classes of what I like wanted to do. So I didn't yeah. sit out here just like, I, I can't fake confidence at all. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> what are you talking I, about? Oh, I have to know what I'm doing or else I might turn red and get super awkward. I'm not good at lying. So okay. let me get some understanding before I move away to yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. Oh. I mean, improv and that seem to go against each other, right? This this idea of you're not good at lying or like not knowing what you're doing. So maybe explain to, to those who are not really versed in in improv comedy what you mean by that sentiment of knowing what you're doing but also wanting to do improv does that make sense that that <laughs> kind of <laughs> well i just mean <laughs> you, you said you wanted to sort of learn some stuff before go moving away you wanted yeah. the basics and i think most people's idea of improv comedy is you get up and you just do whatever right that that you just act out something. And the whole point is that you're making it up on the spot. So how do you learn the basis of, basics of something that is done on the fly? There are so many rules in improv. It is so freaking hard and takes years until you could get comfortable at and yeah. good at. And then you see the people who are like the main stage of the groundlings and they've been doing it. Most of them are like 40. Yeah. Doing, but they started there forever. They, they're like pros for a reason. It's one of those muscles that just, just keeps on building the more, same with stand up. Yeah. Um, but yeah. You just, anyone can get up and do it, but that doesn't mean they're going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. So are you still doing improv stuff? I stopped last year. Ah, uh, why'd you stop? Because I love stand up so much more, and I feel like the fact that I was doing both for five years, I wasn't able like to fully focus on one. So yeah. I was just slowly going. <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel like you were making headway more in stand up than improv, or you just really liked stand up more than improv? Not at all until I quit improv. Then I was able to quickly see changes. Oh, interesting. But they both really, really helped each other big time. So I'm happy yeah. I did both, but I had to eventually choose one. Yeah. So what did you like about stand up more than improv? Stand up makes me happy. And like the, being around people in stand up, I feel like I'm like with family. I don't uh-huh. know what. I just am comfortable, and it feels like home. And even yeah. if it's a yeah. person that does stand up, they still <laughs> like that. Yeah, it just feels like your family member. When it's like a <laughs> improv, I'm like, die. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, improv is such a happier medium of comedy, right? Everyone's supportive and yes, ending. Oh. Stand up is generally full of of very cynical people, right or no? <laughs> I. I've never felt more judged in my life 
than my then private it, accountants and doing improv. Interesting. Yeah. And stand up, I feel very supported by fellow stand ups. Yeah. No, that's great. That's good. I mean, I love stand up. It shouldn't be that way. It doesn't <laughs> seem like it should. Maybe this is just my experience, but. Maybe so. Maybe so. Now, do you hang out with more male stand ups or female stand ups, or is it even? Pretty even. Yeah. And are the are are people all like both genders genders generally supportive of you, or do you feel like there's some sexism going on? I feel like the people I hang out with, it's pretty equal. Or I wouldn't hang out with them, and I feel like the females, it's like you get in your head of like, oh, this is my competition because she's a female. Right. But also, all of my friends. First of all, there's room for more than one, as we see on TV. I mean, and maybe. But, yeah. <laughs> but also we're all, all my friends are so different and everyone whose style is nothing like who I am we're all so different so no one can take your spot if it's your yeah. spot yeah 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 oh that's good that's good to, it's a good a positive way uh, that you look at it um, that is totally the way I look at it too uh, that's great that's great no let's see so what um what what have you always been interested in stand up? Did I already ask you this? You said like comedy and stand up, and I grew up watching Saturday Night Live. Is what I was. Saying. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, and that's what I was going to ask you. Golden age of stand uh, of Saturday Night Live, or has it always like? Is it good now, or was it good before? Different. Like, what's your view on? Are you still watching Saturday Night Live? I love every season of Saturday Night Live. People oh, always say they don't. It's, it's always the same thing. Ah, it's not good anymore. But people yeah. have been saying that every single year since it started. Mm. So people said that when Will Ferrell was on the cast. It's not good anymore. I liked my cast. That's how they talk. Yeah. I mean, people can, <laughs> people can be wrong, though, right? I guess... Or I don't know. People like to hate on things. <laughs> and it's such a crazy sure. show. They write a whole show in a week. There's not all going to be winners. And then they choose different sketches for different types of people so that there's yeah. one least for everyone to like, which means there's going to be ones we don't like. But I definitely love Molly Shannon and Sherry O'Terry and all of them. Yeah. So, I guess Sometimes I get the feeling that Saturday Night Live is written for a certain age demographic in particular. Uh, you know, I think high school, maybe early college is when it really peaked, at least for me. And that might have just been I was more attuned to pop culture at the time and got some of the political jokes as well. But now I feel like I've aged out. I don't get a lot of what they're doing, you know? But yeah. That might just be me. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I still really like it. I love it. Well, that's because you're juvenile. Um, that's my point. <laughs> I mean, there's bad episodes, but there's always been. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. No, it's good. It's good that you're such a supportive person. Um, there's so much that I could learn from your attitude. Thank you for <laughs> Being who you are. Uh, no, that's great. That's the things I like. <laughs> Did you want to get into things you don't like? Maybe names? Yeah. Uh, oh. uh, yes. I'll name them all. No. That would be great. Uh, send it to me offline and I'll post it. All right, perfect. Oh, okay. So what is, your, what is your writing process like? For, I... For your... I well, I was recently getting better at writing on stage to do like both ways, but now that we're not doing that, I'm back to what I used to do, but yeah. pretty much just, I will sit down and, uh, well, every day in my phone I add, you know, concepts you think of, and then yeah. when I write, I make, just without thinking, just write down my thoughts. And then it goes to cutting, like majorly cutting and then structuring into jokes and then adding and cutting and adding and cutting and then open mics. I have so many jokes I've written during quarantine that are like, open mic phase. <laughs> that, so do you, are there any you want to try now? Oh my God. 
Yeah, but I'd have to pull them up. Actually, it wouldn't take long. <laughs> All right. I well, you can do that. that uh, while you're pulling them up, have you, know, you done? Do it? Oh, my yeah, go for it. Have you have you not all of them, uh, but you know a few, a few. Why not? But have you been doing any of the virtual shows? I've done. I actually already had it pulled up from earlier. That's fine. Of um, course. Oh, a joke. Hold on, let me look. Might take a while. <laughs> oh, there oh it is. I could possibly. <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> um, I've I've done. Uh, Three three shows, but one was more of a talk show uh, with stand ups, okay. and the other one was so cool. They were trying out this thing where they have all the comics in a, like a virtual green room, and yeah. then they bring you in. And I was, I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> did you, I make did you, you so. strut into your camera view when they brought you in the green up, room? Like a little, like a little, <laughs> <laughs> like a yard gnome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So, have, what have your experiences? I I think generally people don't like the virtual shows as much as real life, which I I agree with. I I find the virtual shows uh, really difficult. What do you find difficult, or do you find the the virtual shows difficult? Yeah. It's definitely difficult. It's just different. It's yeah. not what you want to be doing. I was opposed <laughs> to them at first, and then I did one, and I was like, actually, that felt really good. Like, it yeah. felt good to just do it. Right. Just keep it going so when everything opens back up, you're ready. It felt good to see people. And I, I thought it was kind of <laughs> cute seeing them in their houses. It was yeah, that is kind of fun. Comforting. And then when I'm done, <laughs> I'm home. Are you yeah. kidding me? That's yeah. not cool. You don't, <laughs> don't have to go anywhere. Yeah. Right. Um, but uh, the difficult yeah. part is the, um, like, you have to really, but it's good practice. You have to commit to the pauses. Because if not, yeah, you just talk to over if you yeah, are going to have a laugh big time. Yeah, right. I mean, you do have to allow for sort of technological stutters and, and gaps and... Yeah, I mean, I've found it to be kind of shaking on the confidence. There are some jokes where I like I know they work in person, but I'll tell it over the Zoom or whatever, you know, Twitch, whatever the, the club is using or the, the producer is using for the show. And there's there's a good second of complete and utter fear <laughs> before you know what's going on. Yeah, I agree with that because you're kind of just thrown into a room. Yeah, yeah. And it's your own room. And it's much more terrifying. <laughs> you can't be like, you can't be the, like, like you're supposed to, as a stand up, be like, I own this room. Yeah. Respect me. But in yeah. here, it's just like, hello, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is an interesting, yeah, right. No, I think you've hit it on the head. That's the, that's the first problem. <laughs> get over. Uh, all right. Do you have any of your jokes pulled up and, Okay, which one do I want? I haven't told any, well, only besides my friend that I, like, pitched stuff with. Okay, I'll oh, do... Are you, so are you living alone or not living alone? No, I live alone, but I have, like, a stand-up friend that we read each other jokes to. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. So... <laughs> this is very um... exciting. <laughs> okay, I'll do... Okay, I'll do this one. Let's see. I hate when the joke's not, like, worked out on stage yet, because I feel like when I read it, I'm, like, reading a short story. <laughs> yeah. Like, I well, don't say, like, a stand-up joke. I'm like, this is a story now. Yeah, and I, I am, you know, I'm just listening for right now. I don't know if you can read my plaque, but best comedian. So I'm just going to listen. If you want my notes, you have to pay for it. Um, I didn't. I, I didn't know what that said because it was so far, and I don't think I want to read my jokes anymore. <laughs> this isn't been, this hasn't been tested. You know we're in a quarantine. No, this is part of the process. We all have to try out a joke for the first time, and I encourage all the critics and uh, producers who listen, bookers who listen to this podcast, to just leave your comments on her jokes in the notes, and that'll be great. All right, no, pick a couple. I want to hear them. I'm excited. I'm going to just do one. 
Oh, all right. I mean, we could do a couple. Well, let's see how the first one goes. I got this from my <laughs> elementary school when I was seven, so. Well, hey, it's your, your name's on it. I don't even have that. Right. And then I framed it. Uh, go ahead. Okay. This is horrible, but in high school, I used to pick on the band nerds. <laughs> okay. Every football game, I'd yell, marching band is for losers! <laughs> I can still picture how angry this is to make the conductor. She'd yell, Mandy, where's your clarinet? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that's beautiful. That's great. Now, did you really play the clarinet? Or wait, was it done? Yeah, okay. This joke's like a three-minute joke. That's oh, good. Okay, no, no. That was the first punch. That's the first punch. I'll be quiet. Okay. All, right. All right. My parents forced me into bands. Uh, I wasn't a loser. I played varsity lacrosse. And besides, I didn't play the clarinet. I played the oboe. <laughs> <laughs> An instrument so cool that it's not even in marching band. <laughs> People always ask me, they're like, Mandy, how did you come to play the oboe? I never knew you were that cool. Oh, I forgot I was supposed to practice a mid-Atlantic accent for this joke, and I haven't yet. That's Shut okay. That's okay. But it all started back in the sixth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the mid-Atlantic accent? That, no, okay. I, I said I have to practice it. I don't it know. Was, <laughs> I'm waiting for a newspaper sale. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna commit oh, to you're the in it. You're in it, you're in it. <laughs> Can you make this black and white? Well, it all started back in the sixth grade. It was 2003. Or as the kids call it, O3. Mr. Martindale introduced the instruments for our choosing. Flute? Ooh, said, that's so cute, said all the girls without mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> Drum? Uh... Hell yeah, said all the boys bound to get STDs. <laughs> then it happened. This instrument is the hottest one of all, he warned. The oboe. And then I raised my hairy middle school arm and shouted, <laughs> The what? <laughs> the oboe, he repeated. Then I re-raised my hairy middle school arm and said, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was all in. I, I took lessons. I won competitions. I was on the top of the world. You've always been a ditzy doll face. An oboe is like a clarinet with a small reed. Too fragile for marching band, you see. Yet strong enough to ruin anyone's reputation. So my parents, they let me quit after ninth grade. Thank God. It was horrible. I made it, I, I made it a whole year marching around the field to Crocodile Rock, full uniform, mm. hat, and everything. Mm. And None of my friends found out. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So now it is, this is live. So if Laura, Grace, or Tiffany see this, I am kidding. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I was never in marching band. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's something I've hid my whole life, and now it's out there. Wow. Look at you. My, I feel honored that you would yeah. debut this this joke on disorganized religion. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. Uh, I love that. I was in band. I played the saxophone, a solo oh. reed instrument. Uh, the oboe's it? fun. I do still have it, and I married a woman nice. who hates the sound of the saxophone. So... Oh. Uh, I know. Even, like, even to serenade, that's like the instrument. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to serenade someone and play the saxophone at the same time. <laughs> but your point is well taken. Now, the oboe, for you, must have been a killer instrument because I would think your mouth structure would be perfect, it's right? Perfect. It, it, yeah. This is the mouth of an oboe player. Yeah, you want <laughs> thin, muscular <It> lips? <laughs> <laughs> and you like, you, like, tuck it in so it's even, like, smaller. Just like, yeah. So then you have no lips, and I'm like, oh, they're tough. They're big. They're just tough. I'm playing. They're here. Don't worry about it. 
Oh my I haven't God. thought that though. It's pretty funny. <laughs> That's great. Ah, the oboe, such a sweet instrument. Now there was a cartoon, Peter and the Wolf, right? That featured the oboe and the bassoon. I did. I, oh, wait, I remember. I don't, I remember the bassoon, but was the Maybe oboe? No the... oboe. I don't know. I think Maybe it was... it's just the oboe or the uh, bassoon, I mean. The bassoon. Yeah. The oboe made a debut in American Pie's marching bands. <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> i'll take your word for it yeah it was not a film high on my priority to see list uh but you I, I remember jokes about a flute right not an anyway. there's a flute and then the oboe the oboe gets it worse Ooh, lucky oboe <laughs> uh, that's fun i think you nailed the women who play flute perfectly that is exactly who played the flute <laughs> <laughs> girls with no mustaches. By far my favorite part of Thanks. Fantastic. Uh, very fun. So, are you from Florida? Yeah, I'm born and raised from South, South Florida. Yeah. Jeez, I mean, how much more hickish can you be? No, uh, that's the floor is pretty darn crazy over there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? What was? I mean, like, yeah. What was your life like growing up in South Florida? It was a great place to be raised. You play outside all the time. I always did. I played soccer and lacrosse and trampolines and swimming in the pool and slip and slides and like, yeah. just always outside, bike riding and stuff. You'd always are you, go are you fighting off alligators and crocodiles the whole time. I've or? seen a lot of yeah. alligators. <laughs> yeah. Now, are they on campus? No, they're not anywhere where I went to school. Oh, um, okay. But it's more like the Everglades. So, like, Orlando, the central Florida is, like, just in the middle. Well, there's lakes there, but not near there. But uh, you can drive down the highway and see them if you're, like... Just hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> that is, it sounds terrifying. I uh, have alligator dreams a lot. Nightmares, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. I mean, they're <laughs> terrifying animals. Jeez. Yeah. Wow, very fun. All right, so what uh, what was your religious upbringing like in South Florida? We went to, um, what was it called? Um, Christ Fellowship. Okay. And we went, I went, we went every Sunday until I was in high school. So mm. once high school hit, then it was an Easter holiday. Slowly tiptoed my way out. <laughs> <laughs> like just you or the whole family decided whole family. we're we're kind of done so what was the i mean was it a slow break or was there a a moment where you all sort of said hey this is or you know was mom or dad the ringleader and like hey we got to get out of here first i don't think that any of them were really like into it like i don't know maybe it was just something to do or just <laughs> like, like ever Everybody else is going to Christ Fellowship. I guess we better. Yeah. Or maybe it was good to raise their kids. Like, I think I'm, ha I'm happy I grew up with that. It gives you some structure and just something. I don't know. I think it's good for kids to go to church. Sure. Um, I'll probably just drop mine off and be like, I'll be in the big room and then go get a beer. <laughs> no, no, no. I've already heard it. I've already heard it. You guys will be fine. <laughs> great. Great. Yeah, great, great. But uh, I remember, like, my most of my friends were Catholic and then I was Christian. And Christian churches were so fun. Yeah, there was yeah. like game rooms. We started in game rooms. There was, uh, so started with games and then ended up just like singing songs the rest of the time. Yeah. Like, Wait, what yeah. kind of games are you playing? Not Christian games. Just board <laughs> games. The box. There were <laughs> machine games in the bottle. We all made them. For God. <laughs> I mean, just with Jesus. It's been in the bottle. Uh, <laughs> Like, um, like video games? Like Monopoly? I it was ping like pong? Actual, like game machines. But when oh. I was younger, the younger group, you painted and did like crafts and then sang. And then older, the games really went up with your age. Yeah. Like so you guys were in like arcades. Yeah, and there, it was an arcade church. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. I don't well, know why you ever left. part. Because then the adult part is like, okay, well, this whole time you told me there was games, and now there's no games. So you really, <laughs> you think I'm going to stay? <laughs> yeah, well, what adult games would they be playing at church? I love Pac-Man still. I'm an adult. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. 
So, yeah, it's kind of just like a slow backward step. Gotcha. Bill Burr has a joke about it. I don't know. Have you ever seen his joke on religion? Ah, uh, man. I mean, I've seen a lot letting, of people. But... Like letting religion go. Is the, is I don't think I've, I've heard that bit of his. He, it, I'll, I'll send it to you later, but basically okay. it's exactly like what I did. It's like you grow up with it, and then he got to a phase of where he was just like sticking his finger there, like, I'm still part of it. <laughs> and then he's like, I just came to a part where he just got to let it go because um, I can't gotcha. yeah. yeah, so so that happened when you were in high school. Yeah. Are you, yeah. Are you the youngest in your family, or did you have younger siblings? I have my brother is three years younger. Oh, okay. Got it. So he was like just starting high school or was he in junior high still? He was in junior high. We never overlapped. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. All right. Fun. Uh, so, I mean, so one thing you said was like you went to Christian church and all your friends were Catholic. Was it really that much different between, because that's all Christianity, right? So what was different between what you understood about God as a kid growing up and what your friends understood about God? Really, the only thing that we talked about was that mine was fun and theirs sucked. <laughs> that they said it was so boring. And it was just like a priest and it was like, oh, and they just sat there. And yeah. that, like no songs. And right. um, then they had to go to uh, communion. Or what was the thing every week in high school everyone went to? Communion? Yeah, probably. Within the Catholic Church, yeah. Communion, Mass, right? Yeah, they, they take do some extra yeah. stuff. <laughs> oh, probably, uh, I think, CDC, like their yeah. sort of Sunday school. Yeah. And I was that like, was oh. on like a Wednesday or something. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So <laughs> you'd just be like, have fun at your oh, boring yeah. church. <laughs> <laughs> so now did you have the rock band? Was this the kind of church that you went to? Yeah. It was like, yeah. my God, this is an awesome God he made. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So are you still listening to the Christian rock just for nostalgia's sake? I should. You know what band I still do listen to? I l it was one of my first concerts. It was Reli Reliance K. Reliance oh, K. I don't know. I, uh, being a Christian myself, I actually hate Christian rock. It's a little bit <laughs> like too intimate. The songs are way too personal. You know what I mean? Like their love they profess for Jesus is very different than I imagine it should be. Yeah, it's obsessive. It's like that's for your lover. <laughs> yeah. Like, but I think what they did is they just switched it out. They're like, okay, I picture this girl, but I'm going to switch it for Jesus because that's where yeah. I'm getting paid. Right, right. She, she right. ain't paying. The church is <laughs> The church is paying, and I'm not gay, even though <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not about a dude. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. So do you still believe in God the same, or did you ever really connect? I guess that's where I want to start. Did you ever feel like you connected with, with the church and the, the gospel that you were taught? No. Um. No, I never felt like he's there. But I also yeah. um, was, I feel like a lot of it is due like, with every, it was hard to believe in something when most people I knew that were Christian and from my church, most of them were really bad people. Like, <laughs> is that not, right? Not like the people I wanted to be. Not yeah. what I wanted to be like. Like very judgy. Yeah. And all different walks of life are judgy. Just what I dealt with. Right. And, and also, Florida. I don't yeah. think Florida had most, I mean, like 90% to do with it. No, I don't know. I had 99%. <laughs> but yeah, then no, that's a fair point. A lot of um, people who I knew that were like the biggest religious people all had really traumatic life things happen to them. Uh huh. And I was like, whoa. I'm good. <laughs> I, was it the idea like if it takes that trauma to get where you are, it's not worth it? Like everyone, to take that trauma. Yeah. 
like a lot of these people lost loved ones and all of them were very super religious. The only people I know that have dealt with these were all super religious people. And I'm like, why is that? That's so weird. But that's also just a weird coincidence of people I know. But yeah. enough to scare me into being like, <laughs> ah, I don't see you're not winning me over here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, interesting. I mean, I, my experience in talking to people who have gone through traumatic life experiences is maybe almost 50-50, right? Some people get really close with their religion and others essentially blame their religion or you know their idea of God for the trauma they've experienced and separate themselves from it. Yeah. So it might be sort of a self-selection bias too in that the people who are most vocal or those who profess to be more religious are also the people who have gone through trauma. And, and that's why they are so close, you know, potentially to their idea of God. These ones were religious before, but... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, I, all, I also always remember, like, exactly what you're saying, is a, a lot of people find God when things bad happen. Like, when the girl, I remember when she lost her arm in Hawaii. Oh, the surfer woman? Or, like, but I don't think it was her story. It was someone on the news with one arm that just got attacked by a shark. But it wasn't Hawaiian girl. I'm mixing them up. And she's like, yeah. but now I found God. And I'm like, F <laughs> I'm, <sorry>. I'm good. <laughs> I just I'm good. Don't me. find me. <laughs> I'm like, oh. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm a paranoid person. Okay. Yeah. I just don't think, I hope that's not how God operates in <laughs> sending trauma to be like, I'm reeling you in. <laughs> you know? I, I hope that's that. the way this is supposed to work. But I can understand that association for sure. Yeah. Especially when people talk about, you know, God has a plan, right? Like you go through something terrible and a, a religious person's instinct is to tell you, oh, it's okay. God has a plan, which implies a whole lot of, I think, really damaging things, right? Like God meant for this to happen to you. <laughs> well, why though? Well, why? Anyway, and so you never really connect. Do you, did you pray? Did you grow up praying? No, because my family, we just went. Oh, okay. So just social. It was most, it, was it more social for you? Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't even, yeah, it wasn't like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and, uh, okay. No, that's cool. So, uh, what's your idea of God now? Or do you believe at all in God? It's honestly something that I just avoid talking about. Because <laughs> I'm so... Oh, I'm for just coming on my show. No. <laughs> no, no, no. That's like, this is good. This is good. Be an adult, Mandy. Don't hide all your feelings. Um, okay, this is a crazy thing. So, yeah. like, how I deal with, the, like, a lot of things, I don't know. I just uh, uh, avoid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. The ostrich defense is good that's for a lot bad. of things. It's bad. Uh, <laughs> not well, I mean, you live in a society where you're not even encouraged to go out and just talk about God with people, right? I mean, and we're, we're also in a climate now where it's like you're not really essentially, you know, you're not pushed to go out and talk politics either, really. Mm -hmm. right? You never know who you're going to be dealing with. Uh, but I'm not going to judge you for your beliefs. I believe in some really silly things, and I can understand people wanting to avoid talking about it at all. Uh, but, but no, I, 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 but like talking about how people are here, I do think it is weird how people think it's weird, and people do believe in God. Like, we should all just have our opinions. Pretty much, like what I feel now is, I'm just trying to like believe in myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah fair enough and if i want something and I, i'll try I try to be a good person do what's right and yeah. if i want something i'll think hard on it and yeah hope the best and yeah who knows maybe one day i will go to church again and stuff i'm really just taking life one day at a time <laughs> Yeah, I mean, especially in quarantine times, right? I think when. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I mean, okay, so one initial thought, 
and then uh, a question. My initial thought is that repetitive thinking you're doing, that's prayer. So you're already praying, you know, you're halfway there. Uh, now the, <laughs> the, the question I have is where do you turn for comfort? Because uh, for me, I turn to my religion and my idea of God, you know, especially in these sort of uh, uncertain times. Um, where do you go for comfort? Is there a good book or movie or Christian rock song? <laughs> where, do you go? where do you go to feel better about things? Um, Chipotle? <laughs> That's a temporary fix. No. <laughs> If we want to say, like, believe in God to feel better, I'll just try to keep a positive attitude. Yeah. Gotcha. So I guess it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, I mean, mine has a deep moral purpose and eternal <laughs> uh, perspective. But, yeah, no, it sounds exactly the same. Uh, <laughs> like, I, okay, we can believe that there's, like, a thing. Yeah. So do you believe in an afterlife? I don't even know. Yeah, you haven't even thought about it. I I hope, but I also wouldn't be surprised if you just die. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. If there's nothing, no one will know. <laughs> you know what I mean? It'll just be over. There is that part, though. Like, since, like, I grew up going to, like, Christian, uh, and I'm like, well, I know if I just say I believe, I'm good. <laughs> no. yeah mean, yeah i mean i don't particularly ascribe to that thought process but i understand i understand that for sure yeah it's a so topic. yeah no go ahead no it, it is like, it is it's a lot yeah i wish the answers were more clear <laughs> you said you hope there's an afterlife if if you were to, you know, wish list, what would you want the afterlife to be? Um, no complaining. Oh, man. So no stand-up? <laughs> 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 Do you think, you think there are oh, angels yeah, and gods up there doing stand-up? <laughs> Darn it. You got me. You really got me. Nah. I, I'd like to fulfill my stand-up enough down here. <laughs> well, fair enough. Yeah. All um, right. So no complaining. I think that's good. No nothing. Cellulite. Maybe nothing to complain about. No, no cellulite. cellulite. Yeah. Interest. Yeah. yeah. For all. What did you say? Big lips for all. Of no course. small lips for all. <laughs> I hope you're listening. Um. <laughs> yeah. And not having to go to the bathroom. That would be amazing. How much time do you think we would save in life if we did not have to go to the bathroom the way that we do? I have an overactive bladder, so I would save a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. I forgot for a moment ab that about you. Uh, and I won't, we won't delve into it, but no, it's a very, we should leave that for viewers who are interested in you and you all should be, go find Mandy on the interwebs uh, and find her sets and, and her stand-up jokes about her overactive bladder. Fun stories. Good times. So much stories. <laughs> so when does that come out in a dating process with a guy or girl? I don't want to judge. Uh, when do you tell them? First date, second date? Third oh, date, or is it a surprise? You what? I just wait till I pee there, Ben. <laughs> and then it's like, <laughs> ah, I have a thing. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> um, uh, that's fun. That's yeah. very fun. Well, good for you. Good for you. Uh, all right. I think I think I've peppered you enough with questions. Do you feel like you've you're you're good? Was there anything else you wanted to say about religion in general? Do you hate religious people, or what's your thought on religious people that you've had to deal with in your life? No, I think it's great. Well, I did CrossFit for a while, and everyone in CrossFit is very religious. Oh, um, yeah, they're all. I would... <laughs> you didn't why? know that? No, why would that be like a Venn diagram overlap? Area? I think it's a group of people who like being around groups of people. Like the feeling you get when you leave church, like it feels good. It's like we're a community. We're all doing their 
bettering ourselves and cross yeah. is the same thing we're a community we're bettering ourselves and like, yeah not a cult but a cult like not you know what i mean <laughs> like a <laughs> yeah. very intense group yeah i know what you mean i guess i just feel like if people are getting that need satisfied going to church why would you go to crossfit for the same you know do you know what I mean? Shoveling down. <laughs> I mean, maybe, yeah. So it's the fit people. I mean, these are these are also body conscious, health conscious people that are doing CrossFit, right? Yeah. Um, but no, there's nothing wrong with the religion. It'd be so much easier if I could just, yeah, let's go to church. I mean, and nothing wrong with with religion. I also disagree with. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with people wanting to believe in whatever they yeah. want. Yeah, no, I understand. <laughs> uh, that's fun. Well, good. All right, all right. Now we've reached the segment where you get to ask me questions about what's the deal with Mormons. You'll have way more clear answers about religion than mine. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. Okay, Depends so... Depends on your questions. Um, so there's two things. So when people first... Well, there's the, 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 my two things are when you hear that someone's Mormon. First question is, yeah. what's the whole Utah thing? <laughs> what's <laughs> Utah? Well, but is that where it started? And No, no, it did not start in Utah. It actually started in New York. Nor <laughs> upstate, yeah, upstate New York. Uh, I mean, so Mormon as a religion, Mormonism as a religion, a religious group, was organized in New York in 1836. Uh, religiously, we do not claim that as the beginning of our beliefs, though. We go back to Adam and Eve. We think everybody who's been a member of the true Church of Christ, uh, you know, started with Adam and Eve and went through the Old Testament, um, went through the New Testament, and then was lost from the earth and was restored through Joseph Smith in the 1830s. But start in New York. And then the saints, as we call them, the you know the members of, of my faith, uh, were moved from New York to uh, Missouri, um, and then kicked out of Missouri and traveled farther west to Utah. Okay. So Brigham Young was the prophet at the time. They made it to Utah uh, in the Grand Exodus out of the east, um, and then when he reached. Salt Lake, the Salt Lake Valley. He essentially had a vision uh, before reaching that area. And then when he saw the area, it was like, oh, this is. And so he's famously said, quoted as saying, this is the place. And, you know, uh, claimed Salt Lake Valley as this is where we're stopping. This is where God has decreed that we rebuild and, <laughs> and um, start, you know, our, our life here as, as a community under God. So, so that's how we ended up in Utah. So yeah. if most um, people who are Mormon, do they move? So they just, most of them live in Utah. Or do a lot of Mormons live in other states? Uh, now there are 13 plus million members of my faith. There are actually more members of the faith out of the United States than there are in the United States. Oh, where? Most, uh, mostly in South America. Yeah. Yeah, um, but those who live in the U.S., uh, I think a majority of them, yes, they are in Utah. Utah is predominantly Mormon, predominantly Latter-day Saint. Um, I think it's like 90%. It, it's probably gone down since last I checked, which was a while ago, like years ago. Uh, but yeah, predominantly Utah. There used to be this idea within our culture that you needed to move to Utah, but that's long since been, um, I guess, dissuaded by church leadership saying, no, 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 you, you were baptized in France, stay in France. Um, okay. yeah, yeah. Cool. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, so the second thing is, um, polygamy was started by Mormons, right? <laughs> Well, I mean, polygamy has been around for a long time. Uh, we we would love to take credit for this genius <laughs> idea. But uh, no, it's been around for a long time. Mormons, I mean, people of my faith practiced it uh, early on in the faith, you know, 1830s, uh, soon after it was organized. And then 
stopped in the I always get this wrong the exact year, but it was quite late. I mean, I think it was late um what, mid 1900s, mid to late latter half of the 1900s. Yeah. Um, so it was practiced for quite a while by, by my faith and then was stopped because the federal government passed laws against it. So some, (laughs) some members of the church were actually sent essentially on missions to Mexico. A lot of, uh, Mormons that were still asked to practice polygamy moved to Mexico to, uh, populate Mexico, uh, some of Mexico city and, uh start colonies down there yeah and that lasted for another i think couple decades and then it was also stopped uh so generally i mean my faith now no longer practices polygamy and they haven't officially since you know the 1970s somewhere around there um which is pretty late all things considered uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so that's you know that's the official stance now. No, no mainstream member of the faith practice practices polygamy. Uh, we'll see if it comes back, given <laughs> marital laws and marital definitions. Um, but most likely, it will probably not. And if it does, I doubt many members of the church will want in on that <laughs> on that family setup. We'll see. <laughs> It's funny yeah. though because it's it's stopped a while ago. But how people always hear Mormons, and if you're Mormon, they're like, oh, you have multiple wives. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been it's been a little bit convoluted because, well, first of all, we did practice it, right? So uh, it's not like stereotypes all come from somewhere, right? And so it's. And then there's another group that is uh, living in mostly in central Utah. There are some other places around the country where they are that call themselves fundamentalist Mormons who do still practice polygamy. So it convolutes the issue when you have a group that still claim this Mormon title uh, who do practice it. So interesting. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, and then you have shows, you know, Hollywood that perpetuates the stereotype big love that came out not too long ago um you know reminding us all the the early days of our faith why so. what is that is it a show or a movie oh yeah yeah big love was what an hbo series i think i forget which you know network uh did it but yeah it was a it was a show for a while a series an episodic show about that, well, I don't know how bad it was. Uh, I never watched it necessarily. Uh, well, not I never watched it, so it might have been <laughs> fine. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you know, I guess for me, it's it's it would be nice if people were portrayed. And I think we do this. You know, this has been an issue for every demographic uh, in Hollywood, right? Yeah. Um, It'd be nice if we were portrayed accurately, you know, if there were a blurb or something that came up that was like, hey, Mormons don't really practice polygamy anymore. This is uh, an expose on an earlier time or on a fundamentalist group. You know, it'd be nice, but (laughs) it's fine. That's why you have your stand-up. Yeah, yeah. I've got to set the record straight all on my own. Uh, (laughs) You can do it. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see. Not if we can ever go outside again. One day, one day we will. Maybe so. Maybe so. <laughs> that was that it. Is that all? Are those the only questions you had? Those, those are like two things. When I think of Mormon, it's that. yeah. Enjoy like what's your favorite part about being Mormon? What you, what do you most enjoy about your religion? Multiple wives. That's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I think it'd be a huge negative, to be honest. Um, <laughs> let me think. The best part about being Mormon, uh, I don't know, going to heaven, maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> Just love me. Uh, I mean, I do find our idea of the afterlife incredibly comforting and intriguing all at the same time. You know, because we believe that uh, to... You know, if you go sort of to to the best part of heaven, 
uh, that you're with your spouse and you're just like God. You are creating planets. You are creating spirit babies that you send down to another earth or to another place to, you know, live the life that we're living now, a type of, of continuation. So I find that very intriguing um, and, and comforting, you know, that this person that I've picked and married in a temple is going to be with me forever. So, so freaking cute. I know. Not every day is it cute, but most of the time, most of the time it's quite cute. I think that's what I like most about the religion. Uh, but, you know, there are cultural aspects too. people that you get to know that that are fun and people you get to know that aren't that fun, like any like any group of people. Yeah. So, so if you get yeah. to choose like beer babies and stuff. Do you think it gets approved first? Wait, what do you mean? Say that again. If you when when you get the power to do the cool stuff up there, do you think it gets approved? <laughs> yeah. Do you think it gets approved first, or you, you think it needs approval, like get, a, like at work, like? Oh. Uh, well, I mean, if 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 we follow, so I I want to be careful how I say this. Uh, you know, we believe gender is eternal, right? So God is typically is thought of as being male, but we do believe in a heavenly mother and don't talk about her very much. We talk more about God creating things, sort of a singular man creating things. And I, I, if that's the case, which I doubt that it is, but if that's the case, the approval will be through the heavenly mother, right? So my wife will have to approve everything. It'll be just like here on earth. It's exactly the same. <laughs> That will not change at all. So, I think the approval system will be will be within the pair. I don't think we have to go up a ladder or chain of hierarchy necessarily. Maybe, but uh, it's probably just going to be, sweetie, does this look okay? No. No, it doesn't. Go back to work. Well, that sounds nice. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> 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 yeah, be great. Be great. Anything you want to plug, Mandy? Anything you got coming up? Any virtual shows or uh I mean what festivals are you gonna be submitting your pilot to? When should people be voting? <laughs> um you could check out my pilot out on Quibi um next year. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? because uh, I'm believing in myself right now. Uh well, keep praying. Oh, that's good. Um, I have a show called Writer's Block, as you know. Yeah, what very said. fun. Yeah, I'm not sure what festivals yet. I I'm gonna try to see how much money I can save and apply to as much as I can. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Now, are you still hosting Writer's Block virtually or no? No, we talked about it, but I I'm really having a good time doing things I can't do, like getting things that I can't do when it goes back to normal, and that's something I can do when things go back to normal. So yeah. I would rather yeah. just keep on doing what I'm doing. Yeah, well, <laughs> good for you. I mean, congratulations on writing a pilot. That's exciting. Yeah, do you feel so good? I mean, you seem very excited about it, which is great. I am. I've wanted to write it for so long. Yeah. So is it like half hour episode or yeah. what kind? Yeah. What kind of length are you looking at? Half hour? Half hour. I'd like it to be on FX. Um, oh. <laughs> FXX. FXX. Yeah. Always sunny in Philadelphia. You want to get on that train? That'd be good. Very fun. Or Comedy Central, whoever's listening. No, well, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Well, but that's yeah. so exciting. Well, we'll be, we'll be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, most of it is just getting it out on paper, right? Yeah. Just getting it down. Well, congratulations. That's very fun. Thanks. Uh, all right. Well, this will air this Sunday. So, uh, yeah. Where can people find you? Uh, all of my social media is just Mandy Martino. I got them all. <laughs> so perfect. Mandy Martino. I use <laughs> put it. I'm not doing TikTok. Oh, 
Why not? You didn't want to get on. I've been watching a lot. Have you been watching TikTok? I've not enough. I have been trying to avoid my phone uh, as much. I really have just been on Instagram a little. Yeah. They're, they're funny. They're funny. <laughs> they're funny. I don't know. <laughs> some of them. Some of them are funny. Some of them are shocking at what people are doing out there. Uh, anyhow. Well, good. Thank you so much, Mandy. This has been a pleasure. I've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, thank you all for listening. And uh, leave your comments as well. This is the first time I'm debuting this new little studio that we've created here in my garage because I can't go outside. Uh, so let me know what you think. And uh, if you're just listening, imagine heaven and beauty. And that's what my studio looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, thank you again, Mandy. Always a pleasure talking to you. Uh, have a great week. You too. Bye. Bye.